Happy Sunday to you. Hope you're having a great day and you're off to a great start doing your training today. I got asked a question by a viewer and she asked, Brian, will the order in which I feed my dogs have any effect on their position in the household hierarchy? Well, right off the bat, just in short, no. That answer is no. And it's something, one of those many, many multitude of things that always causes dog owners a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and, and mostly in part to the fact that there's just so much misinformation out there on the internet and available to dog owners. So let me just kind of set to you straight. Let me tell you why I say the answer is no in short. And the reason being is, again, we always tap back into our animal's wolf ancestor. We have to. You cannot separate behavior from biology. You certainly can, but it's to your peril and to that of your dogs. You've been advised by many, many prominent ethologists all throughout the world over and over again. Don't do that. Please, please refer back. Nothing, nothing evolves all of a sudden without antecedents. Every behavioral, every new behavioral trait taps into existing, pre-existing processes and structures. That's simply the way it is. So let me kind of go back. Out in the wild, it's not a matter of when you eat. It's really a matter of if you eat, period. And that's where the hierarchy might have some play. Uh, in about a week from now, I'm going to talk about the ontogeny of animal behaviors. And this will really shed, I'll shed some light on this in more detail in those upcoming videos. But it, out there, it's not a matter of when you're going to eat. There's no sequential order in which you eat. It's simply a matter of if you will eat. And that, that is determined by how much food there is. That is, uh, it, that is the final factor. I don't care how many dogs you own. I don't care how many brothers and sisters you were raised with. If you were, if you had eight brothers and sisters and mama throws one biscuit on the table every morning for breakfast, I guarantee you in about three days, regardless of your hierarchy, the person who's the hungriest is going to start throwing some punches. And it's no different with your dogs. And with dogs, once the moment's over, once I've even fought over this food, it's kind of over. That moment's over. Dominance and submission are always found within a context. They're not a full-time job for any human nor a full-time job for any dog. And if you ever want to see a fight, just involve food or a mate and you're going to have the, the, the most violent combatant experience you've ever seen in your entire lives. So let me just kind of show you a video if I may. Uh, these are wolf cubs here, so let me just park up here where you guys can see it. Okay, so here we go. All right, so there's, there's this kill, a very large kill. And in this video, you'll see some wolf cubs. They're about six, seven months of age. And, well, if I don't drop the darn video, there we go, Brian. All right. Well, maybe I should try and not talk so much and just show the darn video. Maybe I won't drop it that point there. Okay, if you can't make fun of yourself, who will? Okay, so here we go. And you'll notice in this video, this is an older wolf right here. It has its own ownership zone, meaning kind of like its own plate. And this right here, this little snarling thing, this is a six-month-old cub. Older wolf. And then again, you'll see a six-month-old cub. And look what that six-month-old cub is doing. Hey, I don't care what your rank is. I don't care who you are. There's enough food for all of us to eat right here and back off of my plate. Reach over to a child. I don't care if it is your child, someone else's child, and they're hungry, and they got a big old plate full of french fries, and you're thinking, there's no chance you're going to eat all those. You reach over there and start plugging a french fry off that kid's plate, and you could get yelled at by that child. No different. Out in the wild, it's called an ownership zone, period. Again, not a matter of when you eat. It's just simply a matter of if you will eat, if there's enough food. If there's only enough food for a few wolves, and then, of course, those wolves with the greatest resource holding potential, those that can acquire a very valuable resource, those that are more bold. And again, you're going to find out about that in about a week coming up from now as I do an entire mini-series on the development of animal personalities. But, for example, you have this large kill, and I'm just going to draw a leg here and a big old stomach and a big old leg over here in the back end of this animal. Wow, this, this thing's going to be carved up into plates, so to speak. Plates. And however many people get to eat at that dining table depends on how big that dining table is. The larger it is, the more food there is, and also goes into account how many kills have we had recently. Do we have young cubs to, to feed? What does all this comes into play? 
uh, where you'll find usually the higher ranking animals is in the choice areas, where the offal area is, where the digestion of the grasses are, the internally easier access to internal organs versus having to go right through that rib cage and go through the bones in the back area, the pelvic area, where it's just a lot more work to get at the food. Uh, they're going to peel away that hide, and you're going to find the big boys and the big girls uh, right in here. And they're going to kick out those little cubs to an area that's further out. Uh, so again, it, it doesn't matter if you feed your dog. If you think, I have three dogs, I have an alpha dog, and I have a beta, and I have Charlie. Well, it doesn't matter if you feed the Charlie first, the beta second, the, the alpha even third. It's not going to affect what happens post-eating. It really isn't. It's simply going to affect what's going to happen during eating, access to food. And I'll show you another quick video. I've shown it before on here, but this, this really just tells the, the tape here. Okay, so in this video here, you have an older wolf, okay, not probably, looks like a lower ranking wolf, got that tail tucked nice and tight, I'm feeding, but there's not enough food for Junior over here, that's Junior right there, Junior back off, back off, if I'm full, you may get lucky and I may leave you something, but until then, you need to be backing away, so I'll put this a little closer to you guys, you see, hopefully, turn. there you go. Just run them off. Run them off. Get away from my plate. If I have enough to share, I'll share it. But not until I share it with myself first. When cubs are old enough to feed off of a kill, like you saw in these last two videos, they're essentially on their own. That's it. The day I quit regurgitating for you, giving you pre-digested food, is the day you are on your own. And you will either become a producer or you'll become a scrounger, but either way, you are on your own. The restaurant is 90 kilometers over hard terrain today. I hope you can keep up. There's a reason, and that is the main reason why we lose 50% of wild cubs Every year, wolf cubs, and then you, you track this thing down to cheetahs, you track it to tigers, uh, lions. The half of these predators die of starvation before they even they reach their first birthday. It, it, so again, it's a matter of is there enough to eat? And if there is, you can go ahead and grab your little plate over here. But I tell you what, hence why you saw those other wolves snarling. Back off, Junior. Stay on your little plate. Don't come over here near my plate. But even Junior's doing the same thing. This is when all hierarchies are really kind of absolved at this moment here. They're, they're, they're just kind of put aside. I have enough. And if I have enough, then you can have enough. And the next one can have enough. We are a group living society. It does affect my direct fitness positively if you're able to eat and help out the next time. Cooperativeness. That we do need that on occasion. don't need a lot of it. Give me four wolves and four wolves can survive. They don't need 40, but I do need something from you. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's always down to number one. So when it comes to this little zone here, here, ownership zones, the less amount of food, the less amount of owners, less amount of plates at the dinner table. Uh, so here's what I've done, and I've always owned multiple dogs, multiple dogs. Dogs. I've never owned, been to one dog owner my entire life. Um, so here's how I get it done. First of all, I kind of keep in mind the here's what you need to understand more than you need to understand rank. Who's the faster eater? That's the one that's going to get into trouble. That's the one that's probably going to get someone a little bit upset. That dog that can eat the fastest, and dogs really don't have a satiation sensor like we have, where we go, oh man, am I full? Am I full? Yeah, their brain will affect them. Their parasympathetic nervous system will kick into gear, slow them down, and cause them to want to do what's called meat drunkenness, walk away from that kill before you kill yourself, you ingest too much food. If dogs had a satiation sensor, then at my vet hospital, why did every single month, and I guarantee you, is every single month, someone brought a dog into us that had gained some sort of unfeathered access to a 35-pound bag of food and consumed the entire thing. So here's my point. You won't feed that fastest eater of yours enough food that they won't care about investigating is there even more food. I mean, after all, 
There's only four wolves, but I'm counting eight plates. As soon as I finish up this one, I'm heading over there to the next one. And then the next one. And then the next one. Get it while you can. You may not get it again. Again, that's why <laughs> nature has a chemical. She just turns on and says, hey, uh, you want to be a little tired right now? I'm going to have you go to sleep for about a day or two. And when you wake up, uh, if there's anything left and no one's stabs the whole darn thing, you can still feed off of it. And that's why you'll find a lot of predators laying near kill for days on end until they finally wipe that whole thing out. So watch that fastest eater. Uh, I'm going to probably feed that fastest eater, at least while I've had that, that dog ate separately from all the rest of the dogs. I contained that animal. I put them up somewhere. They're in a separate room. They're out back. They're on a leash. They're in a crate. In other words, I'm going to make it so that when you finish eating, that's it. Don't worry. The other ones will finish up here in a few minutes. And if they're not finished, I'm not going to take their bowls up. There we go. Again, two things will cause the most violence on this world. One is competitive aggression. Number two is mate. Trying to acquire a mate. Trying to battle over a mate. Well, we can get rid of the mate thing. You know, we spay and neuter them and we're just not going to provide a mate. But by golly, that food is there. So again, to me, it's not the number. It's who's the fastest consumer. Currently, right now in my household with Captain Dave and Poe, they all eat at the same speed. It's the same speed. Guarantee you can set a watch by and they'll be within a second or two of each other when they finish their food and their food bowls are immediately taken up and if anyone even moves in the direction of the other animals that's it's a no no and they've gotten that little no so many times they don't even attempt it anymore so therefore that's another thing supervise the feeding supervise it i am not a believer no way no how and neither are any of the experts that are truly experts when it comes to animal behavior and even the anatomy of animals the digestive tracts of animals these are predators they have a simple simple digestive tract designed to take in a great quantity amount of food burn turn that thing into real fast energy so i can go out and get more energy i'm not going to allow my animals to free feed you're leaving a stick of dynamite lying on your floor again there's going to be some of you going to say well my dogs do perfectly fine with it i'm talking about the vast majority of dogs i'm talking about those the vast majority when you weigh them in against one another you will find far many incidents of fights over food left in bowls and you will in comparison with the other ones who get along perfectly fine always exceptions to the rule always there are just like in science the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But we just simply have to go with the majority rules in this case here because it's one of those initial success or total failures. Okay, so watch out for your fastest eater. I separate that fastest eater from the rest of the group. It's all I care about at that moment. Make sure that dog eats and make sure once that dog finishes, it can't go disrupt someone else eating and cause all sorts of mayhem and a battle inside my house. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to supervise the remaining dogs, make sure they don't be suddenly become a real fast eater and now to cause a disruption. When all the food is finished being consumed, I'm going to pick up the bowls. I'm going to put them away and they will not go back on that floor again until it's ready to start this whole evolution all over again. And I do believe in feeding twice a day for our dogs. I promise you, if you do that, first of all, you won't have any dog fights in your house regarding food. That's a promise that I can emphatically make right here on the live video. I promise you that. Uh, number two, your dogs will remain healthier over the years. I'll explain that later when I do an entire series on canine nutrition. That's coming up too. I've got a lot of big series left over here. Guys, stay tuned. I have some big ones coming. Pups and pregnancy, uh, about having babies and babies around dogs. I have over uh, 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 behaviors, uh, personalities and animals. We have canine nutrition. We have marker systems, uh, Clicker training, how does that work? Yeah, I got a lot coming up. So stand by and a lot of the stuff will be pulled into it just like this is today. Okay, well, I really hope that helps you. Trust me, it will not affect your dog's hierarchy one, one single bit. Uh, dominance and submission, again, is always found within a context. You can be a super born capable of being the dominant human being, but if you have to go to work and work for someone, then you're a very subordinate human being while you're at work. Always within a context, and one of the greatest contexts of all time is food. That's when you will see an explosion of my power versus your power. I want it, and I want it now, and I don't want you to have it. And I am going to attack you. I will do whatever it takes to drive you away from my food, as you saw with these wolves here in, in the videos. So don't fall for that. There you go. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Don't, don't be sweating the hierarchy when it comes to food.
food is feeding, it's husbandry, taking care of an animal, get it done, get it over, and get on down the road to things that are going to be less important because that's a really, really easy thing to take care of. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your day. And if you have any questions, send them to me. I'll be glad to try and cover them on a future Facebook Live video. If not, I'll at least try and email you back, get some sort of contact back. Enjoy the rest of the day. Be safe while you're out there. And don't let your dogs get in a fight over food. It's just not worth it.